It's your Catholic Drive Time with Joe McLean and Emily Alcaraz. Blessed Olympia Bida, pray for us. She was born in 1903 in Ukraine. She was a Greek Catholic, as a matter of fact, but she joined the congregation of the Sisters of St. Joseph. She worked in several towns as a catechist and novice director, and with she worked with the aged and the sick. She taught and helped to raise several young women, and she became the convent superior there in Kerev, where the communists worked against her. Kind of a common story here. Communists wanting to suppress the church, wanting to attack the church, and to try to destroy the church. And in this case, with Blessed Olympia Baida, she was arrested for her faith in 1951. She was sent to a forced labor camp in Siberia, in Russia. But that didn't deter her from what she felt her vocation was, because when she was in the camp, she continued her duties as superior. She organized other exiled nuns, which there were many, into prayer and support groups. And eventually, uh, the communists martyred her for the faith on January 28, 1952, there in Russia. Pope St. John Paul II would uh, beatify her on 27 June 2001, in Ukraine. Blessed Olympia Bida, pray for us. The gospel comes to us today from Mark chapter 4, verses 21 through 25. Jesus said to his disciples, Is a lamp brought in to be placed under a bushel basket or under a bed, and not to be placed on a lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be made visible, nothing in secret except to come to light. Anyone who has ears to hear ought to hear. He also told them, Take care what you hear. The measure with which you measure will be measured out to you, and still more will be given to you. To the one who has, more will be given. From the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Boy, this is a lot shorter than yesterday's gospel, that's for sure. But uh, I love this imagery of the light, uh, you know, should not be placed under the bushel basket, right? It's supposed to be put out on a lampstand. What could our Lord be talking about here? He's talking about your, the faith that you receive. The word that's communicated, the faith that's communicated, the revelation of God that's given, uh, that's given to you, what are you going to do with it? Of course, this is sort of a parallel passage to Luke's gospel in the parable of the talents, right? Uh, when the master brings his three servants and he gives to one ten, one to five, and, and then uh, he gives uh, one talent to another one, and then he goes away and he comes back and he takes an accounting. What have you done? Well, I took yours and I made more. And the last guy says, well, I buried it in a field because I knew you were a harsh taskmaster. And, and he sort of points his little finger at him and blames him for his troubles, right? It reminds us even further of Genesis chapter 3 when Adam called from the bush, blames the, not only the woman but God himself for his troubles. So we're seeing a parallel passage here. What is given? What is given to you, you are expected to use. Not hoard for yourself, but you're expected to take this faith, this gift, this revelation, this word given to you, and you are to communicate this to your brethren, to your, your families, your communities, your neighbors, your, your co-workers, to the whole world. The primary mission of the church, in spite of what we read in the headlines today, is to communicate the good, the true, and the beautiful for the salvation of souls, the building up of the kingdom, for evangelization. That is its primary mission. And what happens if you hoard it, like a, putting your, your light under a bushel basket and keeping it all to yourself? Well, the Lord is warning us here to, uh, to, if we have ears, we ought to hear, right? We, we ought to pay attention because the measure with which we measure out will be measured against to us. And if we don't have the charity to help the rest of the world come to a knowledge of salvation, as St. Paul would say, then call it you whiz. What will that mean for us and our judgment, right? And what we have could be taken away. But if we're generous with it, if we give it freely and give it willingly and give it all the time, boy, He'll give us even more. It's a powerful passage today. Adrian, Emily? Yeah, there's a lot going on in this passage, as short as it is, sorry. St. John Chrysostom says that the lamp or the light that he is talking about is the light of meditation or prayer. So, of course, we, we know that no good work, no virtue that we have is, means anything or is worth anything without coming from prayer. Even if we do all the good exterior acts in the world without prayer, they mean nothing. Um, because they're coming from ourselves and not inspired by God. 
So um, we have to remember to go to prayer as a way to feed our entire lives, to feed our, all of our interactions. And prayer will kindle that light so that we can help others see the truth, see themselves, their own dignity, their own purpose, their identity in Christ. Um, and not if you cease prayer, then that will extinguish your light. So that's what Chrysostom says on this. Adrian? Yeah, and I think it's another interesting point that uh, the office hat says that the uh, the bed, which is referenced there, is idleness. And so he says you must be active. You have to be diligent with the light that Christ gives you uh, because it needs to be shined, shown to all over the world. It needs to be shown to everyone. So do not be idle. Do not be slothful. Do not be, uh, don't hide it under a bushel. Do not rest whenever our Lord gives you great gifts, or else those great gifts will be taken away, for even what you have will be taken. Uh, so I think that's very important. All right. Praise be to Jesus Christ in all things. Uh, that is the Saint of the Day Gospel Day. We'll do that again in the next hour. Hopefully you'll join us for that. But coming up after the break, we're going to have the What's Concerning Us section. Lots of stories here. I want to talk about that Archbishop Corleone story. But Duncan Stroik will be our guest coming up in about uh, 15 to 17 minutes from now. Talking about church architecture. No more ugly churches. That conversation's coming. God bless you. We'll be right back. <laughs> 